We talked about uh, fluctuations uh, in the macroscopic parameters of a system at equilibrium. And uh, we basically said that these fluctuations will be small, uh, but they can be detected if the system is small, so that the fluctuations will be uh, higher <coughs> or more measurable. Uh, or uh, we can use some sensitive methods. Now we can see a manifestation of these fluctuations in our everyday life that's due to density fluctuations in a gas. So remember that uh, we had some ideal gas inside an isolated box and there is a sub volume in this box, volume B sub S. The total volume was B and the system is at equilibrium and I have total capital N uh, molecules inside this box uh, and the average number of molecules at equilibrium in the sub volume uh, V sub S is equal to capital N multiplied by V sub S divided by V you can also write this as N divided by V number density times V S so it is NVBS. So this is the situation at equilibrium for the average number of gas molecules in the subvolume V sub S. But we also have fluctuations at equilibrium. And let's call the fluctuation amplitude delta N sub S. It is the instantaneous value of N sub S minus the average value that's my fluctuation amplitude and with that uh, since we have a large number of gas molecules we expect that the amplitude of these fluctuations will be much less than the average value for n uh, comparable to Avogadro's number we have a large number uh, at equilibrium now, uh, if we shine light uh, on, on this subvolume without fluctuations, what would happen? Uh, in the limit, uh, the wavelength of light that we shine, uh, so let's say uh, shine light with wavelength lambda, uh, that is much greater than the uh, average spacing between the molecules so remember this is average distance between molecules and assume that we have no fluctuations So let's see what happens. Uh, I'm shining light on the sub volume V sub S. Well, uh, there is a change of medium for the light. So what we see is that uh, light will come at an angle uh, with respect to the um, normal. And then what happens is it's going to refract. So if you have no fluctuations, uh, what will end up happening is refraction. Now, if I do have fluctuations, this is delta N sub S is equal to zero case. Now, if I do have fluctuations, what will happen? Uh, light can be scattered appreciably. If delta N sub S is non-zero, light can be scattered uh, again. Uh, this will be in the limit where I have a radius of the molecules much less than the
the wavelength of light. So this is in the limit of uh, small uh, particles, which is basically what we have in the case of gas molecules. Remember, in our ideal gas assumptions, we always assume that the, the gas molecules are point-like. So this situation, uh, the scattering of light uh, from a collection of gas molecules whose number is oscillating in time, it's, uh, there's a fluctuation in time, and uh, the radius of the molecules, radius of a molecule, is much less than the wavelength of light. Uh, the scattering of light in this phenomenon is called a Rayleigh scattering. So what is happening in Rayleigh scattering? We have light incident on a molecule and light is an electromagnetic wave so it's going to cause uh, the electrons in the molecule to be oscillating uh, at their uh, natural frequencies uh, or if the incoming light frequency matches that of the uh, natural frequency of oscillation of the electrons there will be large amplitude oscillations uh, giving out uh, the uh, the light with the frequency that has the uh, that is basically the natural frequency of the oscillation. Um, so this is like a driven uh, oscillator in mechanics. So what we see here is that this uh, spectrum of the scattered light. Uh, intensity as a function of wavelength shows a typical behavior. It's proportional to 1 over lambda to the fourth power. So we find that in the visible spectrum uh, between 400 and 700 uh, nanometers, we will have the highest uh, scattered intensity in the bluish uh, violet portion of the spectrum. Uh, because of the 1 over lambda to the fourth dependence. Okay, so what happens is uh, when you look at the sky, you will see uh, the mostly scattered light, which has bluish uh, violet uh, content, but our eyes are mostly sensitive to the uh, blue portion of the spectrum, and there is not too much uh, violet content in the at the end of the uh, visible spectrum anyway, so we're going to see the sky is blue. So uh, if you remember, blue uh, is at a high frequency in the visible spectrum, a low wavelength portion of the spectrum. As you can see here, it's roughly uh, 470 uh, nanometers. Uh, that's, that gets scattered, uh, scattered mostly together with the, the violet and ultraviolet portions uh, and this is going to give us the sky is blue. Now there, there's, there's a portion of the spectrum, uh, well you can see that uh, actually every color in the visible uh, spectrum will get scattered uh, somewhat so there's going to be the combination of all the colors as well uh, which gives you a white so um, actually a combination of all colors gives you a white but then you have the highest intensity in the blue portion uh, portion so it's going to be bluish white uh, color. All right. Um, so this is basically going to happen mostly in the upper portion of the atmosphere where you have um, higher uh, distance between the uh, molecules. And when, the, when we reach the lower portion of the atmosphere, where the molecules are denser, uh, we're going to see refraction. 
So since light is scattered uh, in the upper portion and we see refracted uh, scattered light uh, reaching our eyes, we will see that uh, we have uh, a combination of all the colors which gives us the white color and because of 1 over lambda to the fourth dependence the highest intensity portion is uh, violet blue uh, and ultraviolet but this is going to be uh, if you compare the portion of the blue to the violet in the uh, visible range it's a small portion uh, so that's going to appear uh, right around here therefore we see and also our eyes are more, more sensitive to blue so we see bluish white color in the sky and what would happen if we had no fluctuations in the number of gas molecules well what would happen is that all of the light that comes uh, through the atmosphere uh, would be refracted so you wouldn't see combination of uh, different colors and you would see that the sky would look uh, black so only uh, the region where the the light hits the sky would uh, give you a refraction but since you don't have scattering of the light so if you don't look at directly uh, towards the sun uh, you would see the sky is uh, mostly black so uh, that's a very important consequence without uh, fluctuations in the density in the number of gas molecules uh, the sky would look black unless you're looking directly at the sun where you would see the refracted light coming from the sun.